Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are rejoining our Artemis 3M crew, uh, just performing some random orbital maneuvers, and uh, wondering why the gimbal on this uh, Apollo service engine is going absolutely bonkers. I do not remember it articulating quite so drastically before, but uh, maybe that's me. But um, since we lacked the crew cabin, or the uh, crew capsule doohickey for which to test the uh, longevity of the life support and the power drain and everything else, we just uh, kind of put the capsule through its paces. Uh, it does have a different thruster layout than the uh, moon rated variant and certainly the uh, low earth orbital rated variant so we just uh, kind of put it through its paces, maneuvered around, got a little closer to that J2 stage gave everybody the epilepsy with the uh, fast forward um, but yeah they waited out there 10 days um, the counter on that contract was not moving Neither was the counter on the 90-day contract, although this is all new me commentary, and I've already forgotten if old me brings it up later on. I'm pretty sure I do, though. But, uh, so there's the conflict there, is that, uh, while we successfully executed this contract to the letter, we were not rewarded for it. Um, but we waited out our 10 days, we were within the required orbital parameters, we put the capsule through its paces and tested a bunch of things out, power draw, life support system to the best that we could and found everything to be satisfactory other than the way that gimbal looks when it's moving around I'm not quite sure about that but I don't know if there's anything else we can do so we went ahead and plotted our uh, deorbit maneuver warped around to the nighttime sides so that we could hopefully re-enter during the day and splash down in a friendly ocean and uh that was the gist of this mission, so now I will turn you back over to old me for the rest of the running commentary. Alright, that's our deorbit burn made, and um, yeah, I don't know why it uh, doesn't want to hold to the retrograde vector, but we're just going to uh, angle it there anyway and kind of hope for the best. And go ahead and get these guys home so we can make changes to the spacecraft to prevent anything like this mission ever happening again. And uh, let me know what you think about the uh, force completion of this contract, because we have been in orbit now for more than 10 days. We met all these criteria, but um, it didn't seem to want to start the counter. And I noticed it did not start the counter for the 90-day one either. So that's interesting. And it's certainly not a simulation. This costs a lot of money to launch. Um, but a, a, a good ground-up test work. And I now have a good list of things that I need to adjust to uh, make this a Mars-suitable spacecraft. So, anyway, we're going we're gonna to get this hopefully less than super skippy re-entry done and get these guys back home, get their after-action report, and uh whoop, whoop, nope let's let, let's let's turn in into the correct direction actually you know what we can just go ahead and jettison the service module so we'll go ahead and open up these tanks here and uh, move that staging down oh you know what we need to do very quickly just to make sure is uh, arm parachute and retract these panels uh i'm rusty can you tell arm parachutes Oh boy, we better do this fast. Retract. Arm. Arm. Staging, nothing happens. Decouple. And away floats our service module. Now if we could just go ahead and get pointed into a retrograde-like direction. There we go. We'll just balance that out. And I will bring this window up and lock it. Yeah, contract stuff can go away, Delta V stuff can go away. No space for more waste. Interesting. So hold on, let me, uh, while we're carbon dioxide dump, we'll just uh, vent that into space. That's good enough. 
CO2 scrubber, still no space for more waste. Interesting. Dump up poop. And dump our wastewater. Scrubber is running. Okay, that's interesting. Very interesting indeed. What's our electric charge look like? Oh, we got plenty. A drain of 1.93 and uh, lots and lots of battery power to get us through. All right, let's adjust this angle just a bit, shall we? We're coming in a little shallow, uh, per my tastes, but I know that when this is coming back from Mars, it's going to be coming back from Mars. So <laughs> it, it will be coming in very hot. And hopefully we'll get a nice view of our service module uh, exploding into the upper atmosphere. That's always fun. And a nice little attempt at uh, old me to be cinematic, or at least get uh, something that was thumbnail worthy as the uh, service module streaks overhead. I guess that is uh, kind of pretty. And there go our explosions. Uh, way off ahead of us and uh, for the really the first time in this entire mission everything started going fairly well uh, the explosions are far enough away not to be scary uh, we started to re-enter just as we wanted to uh, switching into descent mode did not kill everybody and uh, we were actually coming in low and hot enough that uh, we did not have to make a second pass. I will not be getting another one of my Super Skippy reentry awards this time. I may have actually uh, figured out how to do this stuff, air quotes, correctly. Although I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to jump into descent mode once you're already in the middle of being embroiled in hot plasma. We'll pop out of descent mode and just let the capsule ease itself all the way down. I don't bother to lock the fuel because uh, every little bit that we get rid of uh, helps us come in for a nice cushy landing. There's our drogue chutes in their pre-deployment stage, uh, helping ease some of that speed. There go the primaries, and then the drogue chutes will hit full deploy. The primaries won't until about one kilometer up, coming up right about now. There we go. And uh, that was almost thumbnail worthy, if not copyright infringement. But it was a nice, easy, smooth ride back home, unlike the launch. And so, you know what? I'll take it. Excellent. A successful splashdown, or several successful splashdowns, depending on how you want to look at it. But uh, let's go ahead and recover the vessel and get these three back. And... Uh, get their mission debriefing logged in so we can make the appropriate changes. All right, well, here we are in the VAB with the uh, Artemis 3M-1. And the very first thing we're going to do is tuck these engines into something somewhat appropriate and then switch them out promptly. Uh, they are the J2s. I would like to be using the H3s. Very much so. So we will just uh, remove all of them. Alright, and let's go find our HG3 series. Yep, here we go. And you know what? We should probably uh, make it so we can get under this little guy. All right, and so there's the uh, first configuration. Uh, there we go, and now let's get him down closer to the ground. Also, so we can get under that uh, height restriction. 
And I think we are going to leave the J2 as the uh, transfer engine. It does a pretty good job. And I do worry about needing the three ignitions. Um, other thing we are going to do is... Wow, that just looks unsettling, doesn't it? Now, yeah, you know what? We're going to... First, we're going to set these sepatrons off to the side, and we're going to switch this core. The Saturn instrument unit. Bada bing. this height up a bit. There, that looks good. We want four of these. And we want them angled about like that. Maybe that looks very off. Dang it. And that is, what, 3.9 meter? So I imagine this fairing is going to do something funny if we put it back on just as it is. Yeah, that ain't... Yeah, that's weird. That's really weird. No, we're going to leave you on. And we're going to... I'll take that. Oh, staging. Derp. And where did all of our HG3s go? There they are. There's two. Put you down here. There's the outside two. We'll put you down here. And there's the center one. Good. All right, so... You go um, engine ignition, tower sep, booster sep. <laughs> that one caused lots of problems. Uh, we actually probably need to do tower sep before that, but we will now that we're done with these. And from there, it's pretty much automated. And we should be good to go. So, total life support, 233 days. That should be well more than enough to get us to Mars, provided we don't uh, blow up our HAB module again. And we've got comms and all the docking stuff should be good. We tested that uh, with our lunar lunar program uh, all the docking ports are configured and firing appropriately comms equipment works the only thing we didn't really test was the hab but that's should be pretty self-explanatory although I should probably take a look at it just to make sure yeah and that's uh, containers for waste those are jettisonable when they uh, uh, get filled up, although we could just vent that stuff into space, really. And the heat shield for braking, we'll need that. Yeah, extra fuel. Food, water, oxygen, food, water, oxygen. And the, the two habitats. Uh, the only thing that really kind of irked me was the placement of this engine uh, we're just going to slide that down a little bit. There we go. Kind of clean up the lines. 
it does look uh, a little bit better. But uh, power generation checks out, life support checks out. I think we're good. I think we're going to go ahead and build one of these 150,000 credit monsters. Uh, just as soon as I adjust the fairings, because I am a little retentive about these things. All right, bink, dink, ta-da, extra height. Ah, I love it when it just doesn't need to be adjusted. It just fits. It's perfect. Yeah, and I think we're above our height requirement. Yeah, by 0.2 meters. There we go. All right, and let me just make sure this is a balloon cryo tank. Yes, it is. Fantastic. And that's it. We're good to go. So we'll just uh, make this the Artemis 3M.2. Save. Build. That's like most of our money. All right. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for hanging out, everybody. That's going to do it for this episode. And I hope to see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.